Hey family, I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm Habasa, helping your brothers and sisters in Africa as well as the Creole Griot test. How y'all doing today? I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day, no matter where you are in the world. I'm just enjoying myself here in Galveston, Texas, y'all. I'm reminiscing with my batik print that I got in uh, marked when I was there with Habasia's name. See the bottom has Habasia on it. Y'all, it's windy out here. But anyways, y'all can see it with Habasia on it. <laughs> you know, at least you can see it's windy. But there you go, y'all. Habasia. Helping your brothers and sisters in Africa. And Africa is just enjoying itself, y'all. No matter how you look at it, it's beautiful. I just like the colors in it, y'all. I do. Do y'all get things made special when y'all travel someplace? Sometimes it's the little things that we bring back. If I wanted to, I could actually stretch it on a stretcher frame and hang it on the wall. Or I could just hang it on the wall without being on stretcher bars. Y'all, yeah, seem like whether I'm in the front or the back, seem, sometimes noise finds me and I don't know why. <laughs> But anyway, y'all, I just came out here for a few minutes just to make a comment on a comment that I got. Y'all that's been watching me for some time know that my nonprofit organization, which is registered in the USA, and the purpose of Habasia is to empower our brothers and sisters in the developing countries in the motherland to self-sufficiency through education. And it evolves in time. When we first started off, we actually started off in Nigeria when I was a registered nurse. And the focus was on health and hygiene in Nigeria. So we had a hygiene program in Nigeria. It really was not a success because the team that was responsible for it dropped the ball, y'all, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and so then we did a after school program for the children that was in a certain neighborhood in Cape Coast. It was successful for a few years, so much so that the people of the number three Osafo company decided to give me a chieftaincy position to say thank you. And that's how I became Safo Hen Akua Mansa. So anyway, Eventually, we came to a point where we just had uncon unreconcilable differences, so that had to go by the wayside. And then we was dormant for some years, y'all, until I retired from nursing. And I went to the Gambia and research my grandmother's name. And then after that, I actually end up buying land in the Gambia. It was three 20 by 20s that's side by side in Jambanjeli. And somehow the ancestors motivated me to make that land community project land and the best way to do that 
was through a food forest project, y'all. I started working on my food forest project right here in Galveston in my own backyard with a very small raised garden bed. I had one fig tree already in my backyard that I started from a little starter plant. And then the one that's straight in the, behind me over there, I ordered it in the mail during our COVID lockdown. The banana trees that's there actually came from my neighbor's yard as a clone because they have sent out signals somehow through their root system to create another tree. <laughs> and all we did was not cut it down. So it's on its own has made one, two, three, four, five, six banana plants that I have not planted and pretty much haven't done anything with other than an occasional watering. That's it, an occasional watering. But anyways, y'all, that's how things go when you let it flow like, like nature. Some things will be gifts from nature and some things you have to on purpose buy, like the organic seeds that I buy when I plant my uh, red okra and my green okra. I tried watermelons in a container, but it didn't do well. I might try that again next time that I'm here doing watermelon planting time and just try to start it in a a container and see if the vines don't shoot out watermelon plants that as long as I water the container it will be fine for the watermelons because you're not supposed to get the vines wet when you're watering you know so anyway y'all somebody contacted me in the comments about the GoFundMe project for the app, for the uh, Food Forest project, and they told me to contact someone else to ask for money in their DMs that I did not know, and apparently they don't personally know, or they would have taken it on themselves to ask that person for something. But y'all, my whole thought is it's not about one person doing the majority of the thing because if you take a lot of money from somebody they're gonna want something for that money y'all they're gonna want some control so they have some kind of agenda and our agenda at the food forest project is to empower our brothers and sisters to self-sufficiency and let them start wherever they are, whether it's container gardening with the containers that you DIY, do it yourself. And then eventually when a plant gets big enough to plant it in your garden, right where you are, your front yard, your backyard, any little small parcel of the land is fine too get started so you can learn what you're doing and you personally can do the watering and, and maintaining of your plant. I don't advise anyone to try to go mass do a food forest because it took us a whole year, a whole team working every Sunday to get from nothing to something at the food forest. And all of the funding that you do not see because it's something behind the behind the scenes believe you me y'all that's a mosquito that like drain my blood but anyway all the spending of money that people don't see behind the scenes or lots of people just think it magically comes down from an ATM from the heavens but y'all, <clears throat> people actually donate through Cash App, 
PayPal, GoFundMe, or I give it through PayPal, through my personal funds. 100% of any of the donated money is used toward the project. Anything that's not received by the Most High, I'm blessed to keep the project within the amount that I personally could find. So we do it slowly by slowly, y'all, unless people give. And I'm telling you, when lots of people give, just a little amount, a widow's might, one to two dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, you know where you can give, y'all. Nobody's ever asking people to give something that they cannot afford to give, y'all. When everybody gives from their heart, y'all, it's a whole lot better than taking stuff from people who give to a lot of different things with strings attached. Because Habasi is not connected to any particular group, no special interest group things, y'all. So I wouldn't even feel comfortable going out there soliciting from any one particular person when I particularly ask you, 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 and you to give your widow's might from your heart. Giving from the heart what you can. That's it. And all will be well with you. When you give, you get something back. It's karma, y'all. It's karma. I treat people like I want to be treated. I give as I want people to give to me. I love my nonprofit organization, y'all. And I've learned to focus on one project at a time that's sustainable even if nobody else gave. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to leave the information down below in the comments. And it's also in the information box. If you are led to give yourself, <laughs> please do. I am not soliciting you to give me any names of anybody that you think should give or have a history of giving. Y'all, I'm asking you personally to give from your heart. And if you can't, I understand, y'all. I do. You should only give to organizations that you believe in what they're doing. So I post what Habasi is doing every week on YouTube. And we also have a website, www.habasi.org, that you can see what we're about. So give if you feel led by the Most High, y'all. And if not, that is okay. I still love you. I do. So until the next time, y'all, peace, peace, power to the people. And I'm out, y'all. Bye.